Uh, we are, we've not moved far from where we left you last time, have we? Well, uh, no. Just back round that corner is Bridge 74, which is Newport Pagnell Road Bridge. And that's where Oak Ridge Park is, which is where we've been mud for a couple of days. Yeah. And there's been an Asda there. It's been lovely, fresh food every day. What shall we have for dinner? <laughs> well, I'll have a walk to Asda. It makes a change, you could get used to that. Uh, talking of Newport Pagnell, which is the name of that road bridge, we're only about two miles away from Newport Pagnell motorway services. So if you frequent the M1, and I was on there the other day, I uh, hired a car, I had to go back up north for a couple of things. And I haven't driven it for that long, and I'm just used to doing like two or three miles an hour. He knows because it was the he was my, my emergency contact, so the police <laughs> rang him first. Uh, uh, Mr. Sean Dobson Fox, is, is there any reason why Colin's driving 30 mile an hour up the M1? <laughs> I thought I was doing 80. I'm like, <laughs> just shows how you get used to the speed doesn't it uh, today we go into I don't know how you pronounce it how do you pronounce it Stoke Stoke what <laughs> Bruin Bruin Stoke Bruin Bruin sounds like something out of a pub doesn't it and we've got to start shifting as we mentioned in the last episode the winter stoppages starts in a couple of weeks yes now if, if you're not if you don't know what these are every year between the end of October and the end of March the Canal and River Trust do maintenance work on the system in August they release like a final plan of what's closing and between what dates so that boaters can plan the winter around it so that we don't get trapped yeah <laughs> that's the theory that's the th yeah it worked last year. It did work last year, so there's, there's no reason. I shouldn't say there's no reason. Why <laughs> no. Shh. Don't Shh. listen. <laughs> We've got to be about 100 miles. It was 80 last week. It was 80 last it's week. It's now 100 miles <laughs> away from where we are now. Uh, and we've got a plan, so we've got to get our skates on to get where we need to be before the stoppage of start. Speaking of 100 miles, we're now 80 miles away by canal from London. Well, thank God for that. I know, but <laughs> it like it, it's been it's like been forever that we've been in London, hasn't it's, it? Yeah, yeah. And then to look at the map and realise that we're actually now 80 miles from London. And when I read it in the book at 80 miles, and I, I was just so tempted to go. <laughs> Milton Keynes is a place that we've driven past on the M1 probably a hundred times or more, but this is the first time we've ever seen it from the canal. And when you look at the town on a map, you just see this huge sprawl, but from the water you don't see that, you just see the green open spaces, parks and trees, and it's lovely. There's over 6,000 acres of parkland in the town, and there's loads of places where you can moor up and enjoy it. This amazing mural was created 32 years ago by community artist Bill Billings. It's supposed to represent Wolverton's past and present and future. But over the years, it got covered in graffiti and the weeds started taking over and covering it up. But a couple of years ago, a team including Bill's son, Ryan, repainted it. They've removed the graffiti, cut back the weeds, and although a few are growing back, it's looking more like it did 32 years ago. Right on the northwest outskirts of Milton Keynes is Wolverton. It's a town that's steeped in railway history, and you know I like my trains. They've been building them here since the 1830s, and at the height of its time, the workshops employed about 5,000 people. Back in the 19th century, 
The two main customers were the Stony Stratford Tramway. That was a three foot six street tram and it had these double decker cars that passengers traveled in and it was pulled along by a small steam engine that had like a skirt around it. The other was the Newport Pagnell branch line which was actually laid over part of the old canal bed and they used to call the steam train the Newport Nobby <laughs> and that puffed away until Dr Beechin shut the line back in 1964. Most of the original sheds are way overdue for demolition and part of the site's already been redeveloped with a supermarket and some houses. The company who run it now have built some new workshops further down next to the old ones and it still makes and refurbishes new railway carriages. But its claim to fame is that it's where the current Royal Train was built and it still lives here, somewhere amongst all these huge sheds. This is the Iron Aqueduct and it crosses the Great Ouse River. Back when they were building the canal they had to work out how to get across the river. Now while William Jessup was working out how to build the aqueduct, they built a temporary flight of locks on either side, four to the south behind us and five just across the river to the north. And even though these were temporary, they wasted a lot of water that was going into the river. Now when Jessup's aqueduct finally opened, it didn't last that long. It collapsed in 1808 and that flooded Stony Stratford. It took three years to build another aqueduct and this time they built it from iron. And it's the one that's still standing today, over 200 years later. You found out what Otis's new job is then. He's the one who went up with the kite, with the GoPro to get the aerial shots, seen as Colin's not trusted with the drone anymore. <laughs> uh, we're coming up to Cosgrove Lock, which marks the end of the 11 mile pound, lock free, bottom pound, to here. This is the first lock of many, which is gonna take us up towards Braunston. Are we going Ooh. to Braunston? I don't think we're going to Braunston. We always said we weren't going we're, to Braunston. We're not going to Braunston. As we come out of Cosgrove Lock, on our left hand side is the Buckingham Arm. It's the it's an old canal, it went down to Old Stratford and Buckingham. Not where the palace is, that's where that's where he's like, you had, you had one line in the whole thing. Not where the palace is. I might look daft. <laughs> uh, it went it fell into disrepair in the early 1900s and never really recovered. The last boat to go through there was a Fellows Morton and Clayton boat. And it, it, it got stuck in the silt, they had to get hot extra horses in to pull it through. And then it kind of just got closed down and abandoned after that. But like so many canals, there's a, a trust that's been set up and they're slowly but surely restoring it. Uh, it'd be nice to get like the whole 10 miles of the stretch open again, wouldn't it? It would, yes. It would. You remembered that bit. Go! You know that thing where somebody waves at you, so you wave back all enthusiastically and say hello, and then you realise they're just trying to grab the end of the fishing line. Oh, embarrassing. <laughs> That's Thrup Marina. That caused a bit of confusion then, didn't it? Because we know we do these time jumps now, but we thought we'd done this humongous time jump. Ow! <laughs> time jump. Ow, shouldn't do that. From the Grand Union up to, uh, where was it, the Oxford? 
I think so, yeah. It was in Oxford where we had the thrup, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and that boat that just passed us, we always have this thing. Well, nobody else in the world has this thing except me. Where you see a boat coming towards you and it's right in the middle of the canal. And we're right in the middle of the canal. Does my breath smell like Emmental? Because no. we've just been eating Emmental. And it's kind of, I hope they're going to move. Although we haven't moved. And then you're like, I hope, and it's like a jewel, isn't it? <laughs> Is it not in your head? Where no. it's like a jewel where they're kind of taking the ten paces away from each other. No. And you just go down the middle of the canal and then just move when nah, you're that's to. boring and the <laughs> tension's building and building and you're both kind of heading head on for each other. And then right at the last minute, or five hundred yards away, you start to move away. <laughs> Is there only me in the world who licks the crisps or the Doritos before I eat them? Probably. Do you do that? Like lick <laughs> the crisps or lick the chocolate off a digestive before you eat the biscuit? No, I don't do that either. You think I'm a freak, but 9.8 million people disagree <laughs> with you. 9.8 million! <laughs> this is lovely where we are, out just outside Milton Keynes. We're kind of straddling the Buckinghamshire and Northamptonshire borders. That means we're nearly in the Midlands. Oh my lord! We're nearly in the Midlands. It's only about over there. <laughs> now I've got to stop doing that. Ah! And Sod's law dictates that when you're kind of on a schedule to get somewhere, after not seeing any moorings for four months, you start seeing lines and lines of beautiful moorings with just views as far as you can see with no people or generators or kids or dogs or people singing Julio Iglesias records. Yeah, that's it. One of two things happened there. That young lad who was looking so cool as he came speeding past us, and that's a clue to number one, <laughs> was going a little bit too fast and didn't account for the movement in the water as the boats passed, which sent him careering into the side. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very lucky that it wasn't like another 50 yards further on because otherwise it'd have hit a boat. There's moats board up there. <laughs> and then number two, it could have been that he was actually in full control of his boat, but he was just so awed to see us. <laughs> no. That, that his mind just went and he just couldn't cope with it. No, I don't, I don't think he was that. No, I think he was going a little bit fast. <laughs> It is really nice to see so many holiday boats still out and about in October and a few of the hire companies have extended their season through to November and a lot of people have been taking advantage of that and are enjoying time on the canal. It is definitely busier than it was this time last year and we've passed a few boaters who are taking their narrowboats back to marinas for the winter but there's still a lot of activity, there's people out walking and exercising, lots of fishermen and it's great to see all these people because it's such a difference from how it was back in the spring during lockdown. Sean's a bit tired. Oh. We've done just over nine miles. That's oh, quite really? a lot. Yeah, we've done nine miles. 
it says the first page was five and a half miles and the second page is four and a half miles which would be 10 miles yeah but it's the half a mile is to the bottom of the locks all ah, right so we just before so we've done it could be about 10 mile but i reckon it's about nine and a half miles uh from just outside milton Keynes to just below the stoke locks there's seven of them at stoke bruin i, I don't know I, I i just still can't get my head around the word bruin it's just me. why i don't know i think it's that bit there it just don't no it's just that bit <laughs> it just don't confuse <laughs> it's been weird because we've only done one lock but sean's a bit tired i think it's the heat in it and it's more the heat up. Yeah, it's uh, it was difficult mooring up because there's some moorings at the bottom of the locks down there. But <laughs> it's full. <laughs> when you come around the corner and see them, you just say that this long line of boats on both sides. So <laughs> we found a little. We had to do a little bit of uh, grass cutting. Grass cutting, and it's always the same. As soon as we get moored up in a nice spot, the first thing Sean does is jumps out and trims his bush, don't you? Every time. What? Gets his big chopper out and cuts all the nettles away. <laughs> <laughs> we're planning on a bit of a special Christmas we're going somewhere special yes. and hopefully it'll be a lovely setting for Christmas lunch surrounded by friends hopefully fingers crossed it all goes well but that's it for today I uh, hope you've enjoyed your cruise with us it's finished on a lovely note hasn't it it's boiling as Pat, as Pat from our narrowboat quest would say I have no idea where we are you, jo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you join us on a lovely day you leave us on a lovely day uh, we're off to get some lunch uh, just a few words before we go if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe and also click the like button the thumbs up if you don't mind if you hit the notifications icon YouTube will let you know every time we release a new episode uh, they sent us a message a few weeks ago saying that they've stopped sending email notifications out yeah uh, that's nothing to do with us that's YouTube because apparently not many people were opening the email so they just do it through the app and the desktop apps now so yeah please don't complain at us you can tell we've had complaints can't you which is why I'm mentioning <laughs> it <laughs> uh, if you want to help support us and the channel uh, you can do so in a couple of ways there's a join button all over the place on our YouTube channel now yeah. uh, just hit that and you'll get some perks and little bits and pieces that nobody else does uh, if you don't want to join youtube you can do it on patreon the link is up above sean's head except if you're watching on a tv if uh, if that's the case jump onto a computer not literally because they're not well not like if sean jumped on a computer that oh, would be it, just wouldn't it be a million pieces <laughs> we'll see you next time take care Ta -ra. good morning morning and I have no idea where we are. Look like it were not greasing up. What's the word I'm looking for? Steaming up. <laughs> I suppose it would get steamed up if you were greased up. I don't <gasps> if you were, you all right? From finished. Ah, I just ruined that all then. Why do I have difficulty saying ruin? I can say brew and un. Bruin. Bruin. I'm hungry. Fancy like really bad stuff for me today, like a big pizza. Big pizza. Echo. Oh, it don't work here, does it? If I've got Doritos between my teeth, I apologise. Do you remember that advert that went, Harry, stop. I know, I know. I can't get that out of my head today. It was Valdunican yesterday. Oh, hello. <laughs>